Hi, I'm Mika Albania Osheral and welcome back to my channel. If you have not subscribed, now is a good time to do so. Hit that subscribe button right there and then don't forget to push the notification bell because when I upload this content, I want you to be among the first to receive it. Let me take this time now to say thank you for all of you who are subscribed to my channel. I've been watching it. The comments are amazing. You know, just the fun that you guys are having, just the same as I am having. My goal here is to try to let you see exactly what I see. I try not to do much editing. I, just, I want you to get the raw footage of what I'm seeing just the way I'm seeing it. I want you to see all my mistakes, all my bloopers. I just want you to see all the, the you know, everything that I'm doing because I want you guys to have the same experience that I'm having. So again, thank you for subscribing and again if you have not please go so and do please go and do so now i just made a little mistake no editing straightforward <laughs> and hit the notification button all right helps get us to 10,000 10,000 but right before we can get to 10,000 we need to get to 6,000 so we're almost there so help us get it share it with your friends share it with your, your neighbors just tell them about this great awesome nice beautiful handsome guy chocolate yeah yeah mocha <laughs> I'm just kidding. I love you guys. Thank you so much. Appreciate you and appreciate your time. You saw that? You saw that? That was like five to a bike, man. It's crazy. But that's the custom here, yeah, like y'all. That's the custom here. Where, you know, two, three, four, even five can be on a bike. Babies. I seen newborn babies on bikes, man. It's crazy. Something that we in the West would think is crazy to do. They do it over here like crazy. And if you look at if you look at the children, they're so used to it. Even the dogs. I can't tell you how many times I've seen dogs riding on bikes. And I'm not talking about puppy dogs. I'm talking about big dogs, like big dogs, man. And they just sit on the bike. They're not moving. They're not afraid. They're not afraid. They're not afraid if they're going to fall off. They sit on the bike easy, some on the back, some on the front. And they have their foot up right by the handle, like nothing. And you know why? Could they have been doing it since they were puppies. They were doing it since they were puppies. So... It's like second nature to them. And so when you see like three or four or five on a bike, it's like second nature. Second nature, man. Beautiful, though. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. I've been here nine months. I haven't seen any bike accident personally. So these guys have been doing it. They've been doing it their whole lives. This is the way they get around. It's cheaper. It's easier. It is the way it is. I just love it. I love it. Culture. Can't beat culture, man. All right, welcome back to my channel. I'm Mika Albania Osheral, and this portion of my channel is to talk about traffic. What's so important about this is if you understand the culture here, then you can drive easily. You can drive easy. I know it seems difficult for foreigners to drive here in the Philippines, or some foreigners to drive here in the Philippines because they're thinking, oh man, this is crazy. This is crazy, this is crazy. So the best thing I can tell you is to get out of your head. If I can just tell you to just get out of your head and adapt to the culture, then driving here in the Philippines will be a cinch for you. Not to say that you, can, you don't have to use common sense now. You have to use common sense. But if you understand the culture, then you will be able to drive easily. So. At this point, I want to show you a little bit about of the traffic and how it actually works. I also want to show you how motorcycles rule the, world, the, the, the road. Motorcycles rule the road. They ride on each, any side, left or right, up and down. At a stop sign, they will come right in front of you. You have to understand that. Now, I ride a motorcycle here as well. I ride two motorcycles. I ride the NMAX. I ride the NMAX right here. As you can see, yep, and I also ride the uh, Kawasaki Domina, the Kawasaki Domina 400. 
I acclimate myself very quickly because I just, like I said, I ride like a Filipino. And if you ride like a Filipino, you cannot go wrong. So let me show you a little bit about what, like, what traffic is like here. Now, this is about 929. So the traffic is not that bad. If, you had, if I had come out a little earlier, you would see a lot of traffic going north, west, east, and south, east and south, <laughs> east, west, north, and south, because people are going to work. And most of everything opens around 10 o'clock here. Most of everything, all the, um, all the, there's a stores open around 10 o'clock, but like the wet market and little stores here and there, they open a little early. You can get them at six o'clock, seven o'clock, all the different different times. See, like I said, look at that. Motorcycle runs the road. So you gotta be very, very mindful of that, right? In terms of, um, in terms of, of, of road, road rules. <laughs> I will let you see it for yourself, but Never to assume that you have the right of way, something you learn in the States when you're driving. Never to assume that you have the right of way. Well, here, you have to put that in practice. You have to put that in practice because if you don't put that in practice, you're going to meet in an accident easy. You have to be looking every eight to 10 seconds as you move up and down the roadway. Every eight to 10 seconds, you have to be looking at your rear view mirror, your side mirror, you gotta look to the back uh, mirror of your, the, the black back windshield. You gotta keep your eyes moving, say around eight to 10 seconds every time, just to keep yourself uh, uh, acclimated to what's going on around you. Now, check this out. If you notice the traffic here, right? But the bikes are going in between the cars. The bikes are going in between the cars. They don't wait. The bikes do not wait. So you might think, okay, they're gonna pass you on your left, uh, on your right. But they're actually passing you on the left, they're passing you on the inside, they're passing you on the sidewalk out here. They're passing you every inch and every way in between the cars, you see that? So these are the things that you have to look out for when you are driving. Once you understand that, you'll be awesome. Now what I'm gonna do, my next stop, I'm gonna show you the ticket or traffic controllers. They are really excellent. And you know, you don't, you really have traffic here, like what we are accustomed in the West because you know, you can be in traffic for hours, but here the traffic constantly move. The lights also, I'm, that I'm gonna show you, the lights also, oh, I'm sorry. The lights also is not like your regular nine, 10 seconds, maybe a minute light. The lights over here last about three minutes. <laughs> about three minutes at, at, at each stop. All right, <laughs> hey, <laughs> yeah. So that's something you're gonna see. So we're going to, I'm gonna go down a little further. I'm gonna go to an intersection and I'm gonna show you the lights, the count of the lights. I'm also going to show you uh, where, when there is traffic uh, cops, uh, traffic directors that are, that are um, guiding traffic, how that, how that play out. I'm also gonna show you like an intersection an intersection. Now, at the intersection, that's where things can get a little rough if there's not a traffic person there. So, I'll show you all of that. Now, right here, I'm going to show you something that's very, 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 very dangerous. That can be very, very, very dangerous. But if you understand, like I said, if you understand the rules, understand the culture, and everything will work out great for you. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> all right. All right, so here is where I'm going to show you a u-turn spot where you're going to where you it's legal to make a u-turn but i'm going to show you the traffic coming the people who are trying to make a u-turn there's no light there's no ticket uh, uh ticket oh there actually is now but i'm going to show you when there's no when there's no um director traffic director it it can be a mess watch this so before at a U-turn stop slot, the traffic director will actually stop the traffic. But if you notice, the bikes are inching up. When he's not here, it's every man for him or herself. So what makes this dangerous and what makes this uh, uh, difficult? 
is that the cars and the bike are inching up, inching up, inching up. As you can see, there's about two lanes here, or this sometimes three lanes, if you were to count the bike lane. When you make that U-turn, when you come around and make that U-turn, you cannot assume that the second lane is clear. You cannot assume that the second lane is clear because somebody is driving right up. So you may not be able to see around the second lane because a car or a, or a bus might be blocking your sight. So when you come around this corner, you have to inch, you have to look at every inch of your turn to make that turn. You see, in the States, you will assume the right of way because maybe there's a, there's a light that's telling you go or maybe there's a traffic guy that's telling you go. Even if there's a traffic guy that's telling you go, you still have to pay attention to make sure you can see around a truck or a bus because these bike guys, these bike guys, I'm telling you, they're inching around. Watch this now. The traffic guy's right there. Watch these bike guys. Watch this. See, they're inching up and they're looking to pass and they stop and wait for no one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey, hey, they wait for no one. I know. I ride in the Philippines. So you always have to make sure. Watch this now. The traffic guy is over there and this guy's making a turn. Watch out, everybody inching up on him. That is why you have to wait. You, I, I, I have to say it, and I, I, I have to keep saying it. Do not assume you have the right of way. Do not assume you have the right of way. You see what just happened there with that white car around the truck? You cannot assume it, man, I'm telling you. Because if you do, you're getting in an accident for sure. Look at that bike guy over there. He just crossed that lane, double lane, and he's going into traffic. He just made it. And this is how it is. This is how it is at this U-turn. Now, right now it's about 9.48 or 9.49, 11 minutes to 10. So the traffic is nothing right now because most people are at work. But just imagine, just imagine this times four, times four, ladies and gentlemen, times four. You're talking about a lot more traffic, a lot more bikes. Hi guys, <laughs> a lot more traffic. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> a lot more traffic, a lot more bikes. So this is this can be very dangerous, but if you understand, again, if you understand, again, if you understand, again, if you understand that you cannot assume that because you are in the turn that you're clear, that you're in the turn, that there's nothing coming, you're going to meet in an accident. You have to inch, inch. You gotta look, you move, inch, inch up, inch up, inch up, and move when you can see. Do not make a turn, do not go around unless you can, unless you can see. If you cannot see, the chances of you meeting an accident is greater, all right? So remember that, that's very, very important. Remember that if you wanna drive or ride here, this is awesome. Now, next stop, we're gonna to go to the traffic light. And then I'm going to take you to another intersection. Hopefully, no uh, uh, traffic uh, personnel is there. They usually, when the traffic is slow, they, they're not there. But when the traffic is thick, they come out. But I'm going to take you to a traffic light, and we're going to count the minutes to see how long these traffic light takes, man. You're going to see. And when you see it, then you're going to be like, wow. And it's, it's incredible because as much as cars and bikes are here, you don't really have a you don't really have a traffic jam like that. I mean, you will move a little slow, but you don't. It moves really, really fast. You know, comparing to maybe being on the Brooklyn Bridge or coming down Manhattan Bridge or coming down Manhattan, where you have all these lights that change every minute or so, right? These lights over here takes about four minutes to change. I'm telling you, but you don't have to believe me. You don't have to believe me. I'm going to show it to you for yourself. So follow me to the next traffic light. All right, so here we are at the next traffic light. And if you notice, it's green, but the numbers are not counting down yet. So since I arrived here, I would say I've been here about maybe a minute. Or now, if you notice, the, the yellow light is just 
uh, gone up to red to turn, but the numbers are not counting down yet. So we're approaching two minutes so far, and we don't have a lot of traffic. We don't have a lot of traffic. When it gets really busy, we're talking times, times four here. This would, place would be packed. I probably couldn't be standing where I'm standing right now. But if you notice, the lights still have not count down yet. So we're going on probably three minutes now, right? And the light have not count down yet. So all the traffic that's flowing in these directions have free reign for about four or five minutes. As you can see, all the traffic that are flowing in these directions have about four or five minutes. The light has not start on oh now it start. Now going down to one one eighty it started at one ninety nine, almost two hundred, and now it's counting down. And we gone about three minutes plus that light. So we're talking maybe five, six minutes on the light. If you do the numbers on uh, say 199 seconds, we're gonna find out how much minutes is that where we calculated. I don't have that matte brain. <laughs> All right, but look at that, it's counting down. As you can see, the traffic is moving steadily. Now at about say 2.30, three o'clock, 4, 4 30 that's where you're gonna have heavy heavy traffic but it moves it moves maybe on a car you'll move a little slower but when it comes down to a motorcycle and of course you see female ride motorcycles here too when it comes down to a motorcycle you move really fast and why do you move so fast because you move through the traffic you go right you go left you go left on on the the bike lane you cross the walk it's just the culture and I love it when I want to get somewhere fast, I jump on my bike. And I, hey, how you doing? <laughs> Not too bad. How are you? I'm fine. All right, all right. Good to see you, man. <laughs> uh, I'm, uh, I'm a vendor of fish vendor. Oh, fish vendor? Yeah. Oh, man. No more face, no more face. No more face. Oh, man. No more fish, man. No more fish. So you yeah. Oh, look at that. He sells fish. Look at that. Get a good view of that. Oh man, he sells fish. So this guy sells fish. What's your name, man? A friend. A friend. A friend. Yeah. All right. So if your friend catch the fish, yeah. he sells it on his bike. He sells it on his bike, and he's almost done. He's finished yeah. this bucket already, yeah. and now he just got one little piece left. Yo, man, enough respect, man. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. That's right. I love Filipinos, man. Yeah, Filipinos yeah. are a hustler. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Thank you very much. All right, as you can see, I was talking to my man here. He just stopped, you know, and, 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 and we had a great conversation. And what is he telling me? He's showing me his bike, um, his bicycle, where he do a little hustling on. And, you know, he sells fish, and that's how it is here, man. That's why I love the Filipinos. They're hustlers. Now, going back to the light, all that time we've been talking, all the time we've been talking, plus the two, three minutes that I was here before the light changes, the 199 seconds on the, on, the, on, the, on the clock, we're still down to 19 seconds. The traffic is moving steadily that way. And, you know, of course, the, 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 the one with the uh, turning lane is not moving. But look at that. All that time. All that time, ladies and gentlemen. Look at that. So the traffic light is, takes about four, five, six minutes. One day I'm going to really calculate it. Now, if you notice, it, it's counting... 22 seconds and let's see if it's going to actually change back to to green or it's going to change for the turning lane but it took 22 seconds we're going to look at that right now so let's see if it's actually going to change it does not usually takes uh so quickly to change back from red to green when there's a lot of traffic okay so i guess in the morning time the majority of the traffic seems to go on the main road so the turning lane gets to take a back seat to the high philosophy of traffic coming on the main Cebu South Road so I guess that's why that is but in the afternoon as you can see right there the uh, turning lane changes but in the afternoon it doesn't because now you have a great deal of traffic turning as well so it will take longer but look at that Look at that. 
Now I'm going to let you see that the traffic is moving and the light is still green. So I can honestly say it takes about six minutes or so in the morning. I got a record in the afternoon when the traffic is really, really high. It takes about four minutes, I'm telling you. So that's what you're working with here. Now, I'm going to go down to another intersection right under the overpass, overpass, or passover, they call it, and you're going to see what traffic is like there. I'm assuming there will be traffic directors there, but if not, you're going to see the turn from different angles. I'm going to show it to you so that you can get a, a, a good understanding of how things work here. All right, so what I'm about to show you here is an intersection and I'm going to show you what it looks like with, with uh, traffic directors, right? In the morning or sometimes in the afternoon or sometimes late at night, you won't see them here. If they're not here, it's pretty much every man for themselves. So walk with me and let me show you what it looks like. This is right at the overpass, Rafael Rabaya, where I buy my fruits. All right, so now take a look and see what it's like. All right, so as you can see, there are about four or five and sometimes more traffic directors here. Let's count them. There's one, two, three, and four over there. And if, if you can see, this is a four-way traffic, traffic uh, uh, intersection. When they are not here, this is not what it looks like. They really stop the traffic. Look behind me right here. Hey guys, how you doing? <laughs> awesome. They stop the traffic and control the flow of traffic, how they go. If you notice that guy right there, he just moved. You notice that? Even with the ticket guy, you notice that? He's gone. That's just the way it is here. That's the culture here. So when his back is turned, they might move. So he's stopping the traffic on that side to bring the traffic here. But I'm telling you, when there is no ticket, when they're not here, it's every man, every woman for him or herself. And it's not pretty. But if you understand that, you can operate easy. If you notice, see all those guys are turning over there? All the traffic will be just inching in. All the traffic will be just coming in and just making their own turn, finding their own way. And so when you're dealing with an intersection like this that has no traffic uh, controllers or no lights, that is what you're going to get. You're going to get every person for themselves. That's what you're gonna get. And so you, as a foreigner driving here, have to understand that this is the culture. If you come here, thinking you're going to drive like you drive in your present country, you're going to have problems. Are you going to have road rage? Are you going to have a nervous breakdown? But you can overcome that if you just understand the culture. And one way to do that is to write some of these strikes. Write some of these strikes. If you write some of these strikes, look at that. Write some of these strikes and just see. Or you can, they do have uh, motorbike taxi or, or, or bike taxis here get on a bike taxi and just ride with a Filipino and just see it for yourself or jump in a regular taxi they do have those here too uh, or if you can fit in one of them jitney jitney try going to that and just see how the culture is see how the you know the, the traffic is and get acclimated to it everything you do here in the Philippines you must be acclimated to don't just go do something else, go and just go eat food. Be acclimated to the weather, be acclimated to the culture, see how things work here. Once you understand how things work here, you will have no issues, man. For me, I love the Philippines. It's one of the best places I could ever live. And you know, you got nice, beautiful people like this. <laughs> Philippines are the best, man. I love you guys. Oh man, look at that. You got nice people there cooking nice food. You can get all kinds of food here to eat. I'm telling you. The Philippines, the Philippines is a place to be, all right? So 
very, very important, getting acclimating. Don't just go eat the food. And if you're going to eat, make sure you eat that item alone so you can get your body, uh, 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 again, that word I'm going to be, I like to use is acclimating. So don't come here and just eat up everything, drink up everything. If you're going to drink, um, if you're going to drink beer, just stick to beer. Don't mix beer with wine or beers with other beers. Just get your body used to it. And once you get your body used to it, then after about eight or so days, you'll be acclimated. All right, let's look at another angle over here. So you can come here and buy your GoPros and your Sparks and all of these stuff. And, and these lovely ladies. Hi, how you guys doing? Tell me a little bit about yourself. How long you guys been um, opening as a business here? 20 years, wow. And what, what's your major selling point? What do you sell the most? Uh, accessories. accessories for phones. All right, that's awesome. You also do Gcash, I see. Oh, you do Gcash only, you don't do cash? Okay, so cool. All right, all right, you guys looking good, man. I like your place. Like the lights, awesome. <laughs> all right, so we're gonna hang out here. Of course, this is where I buy my fruits. I get my fruits right here. <laughs> Hi guys, how you doing? <laughs> how you doing? <laughs> yeah, this is where I buy my fruits, man, from that lovely lady right there. Her fruit stand is amazing. She got everything, apple, mango, banana. She got drinks, all kind of pop here. It's just amazing. This is where I get my stuff, man. <laughs> all right, so going over here from a different angle, this is the four-way lane, you know what I'm saying? If you look at it, four-way lane, and come, come around 4.30, this is gonna be a nightmare here. Come around 4.30. These guys work really hard, man. At least they have some shade, but you know, you have these ticket uh, traffic controllers, man. They're in the sun all day. It's crazy, I don't know how they do it. But yes, so look at this. Traffic coming this way, traffic coming that way, and that's what you're going to face a lot. And then you got bike guys who are coming through the middle, right? Look at that. Look, they're supposed to be holding right here. They're supposed to be holding, but because they're turning, they're allowed to turn. So you're going to face that a lot here when it comes to intersection without, without any traffic light. And once you understand this, once you understand, the, like again, once you understand the culture, these are just the, some of the places that when you ride here or drive here, these are some of the difficult points. But driving on the highway or you know, you, what you have to look at or driving on the freeway or down Cebu City uh, 840, what you have to look out for is the bikes. The bikes, the bikes, the bikes. They, they're on the left, they're on the right. But you also have to look out for the, the cars who drive not in their lane. There are some cars that just don't drive in the lane. They drive on the white line itself. So you're wondering if they're going to turn, if they're going to, if they're going to change lane. They're not changing lane. It's just, just the way it is. And I'm trying to figure out why they, why that is done. And I figure I, this is my conclusion. It, it's, it may not be true, but this is my conclusion. It's my opinion. I believe they drive in the in, on, over the white line. It, I think they drive over the white line because they're making space for the bikes to go in between it. It, it's just my theory, but it may be far-fetched, but it's my theory, but yeah. But so you gotta watch out for that, all right? This is beautiful, man. Check it out. But what is much, 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 much more important than the getting acclimated in traffic is to answer the phone when your wife call and go get dog food. Yes, nothing more is important than making sure your wife is happy. If your wife is not happy, you're not happy. So you park the bike in this parking spot right here at the Gaisano Mall. Look at all these bikes, man, it's so amazing, right? And that's my man right here. That's my man right there. One of them. You park your bike and you go get and you go get the dog food. And then when you get the dog food, you don't stay 
vlog it. You go home with the dog food, okay? And whatever else happened, you, all you have to say, all you have to do is to remember that you are the man. That's all you have to do. You're the man and whatever you say goes. You are the man. So you can't be, you, you, you can't be punking out on this one. You are the man, whatever you say go. So you get into the house and she giving you any crap. All you have to do is look her straight in the eye. Because you get the last word. You get the last word. Look her straight in the eyes and say, yes, dear. So here is a, a road at Raphael Rabana, Rab if I said that right. <laughs> and, and Cebu South Road. As you can see, the traffic moves a lot quicker down this road because it's straight and there's not much lights. Uh, the lights do last about the same time. But when you come off that road right there, I want to show you at 103, three minutes past one, what the road looked like right here at the corner. And then I'm going to come back over here sometime after 4.30 to show you what it looks like. Now, though this is the stoplight, and they're all 199, and it's counting down now, though this is a stoplight, and pretty much at this point, people stop at the stoplight, as you can see, we were stopping. The thing to watch out for when you get to like a four-way intersection like this one, is the dash, the 30-yard dash. <laughs> to get across the lane, like get across the lane right there into the turn. Because these people are going that way. These people are coming that way. Those who are making a, a right turn can turn easily. But those who are coming off the stretch to make a left turn onto the highway, it's a dash. And that can be a, that can create some sort of accident, right? Like these people here, they're turning, if they're gonna turn and make a left turn here, it's a dash between those who are going straight from who are actually turning. Again, you have to, hey! hey. <laughs> Again, you have to pay attention when you're making those turns. Because if you don't, though you might think you have the right of way because you're way up in the middle of the street, like you're way up there, you might think you have the right of way, but someone is coming from the side and can cause an accident. So you gotta be very, very careful there. We will definitely come back here and you're gonna see when the traffic is like four or five times thicker than it is now, the type of dash to get across. Now we're gonna hold up a little bit to see if, if we can actually witness that a little bit because there's about 10 seconds left on the light. We're gonna see if we can witness a little bit of dash even with a little bit of traffic. All right, so let's look now. All right, so here's the light about to change. Well, not yet. As you can see, it's counting down again. It count down and it end, and that ends the turning traffic, as you can see. So there's another countdown for, uh, from 170, I, th I think it was. But look at that. So you can stand at a light for anywhere between four or five minutes waiting for the traffic light to turn. It's crazy awesome though. And I think it's, it's a genius way because it keeps the traffic moving, even though you might have a little, you know, you might have a little stoppage there, here and there, but it does keep, it does work. It does work. Nothing like what I'm used to in Brooklyn and Manhattan. Okay, here it goes, here it goes. See that dash right there? Look, you see that? Look at that, look at that, you saw that? You saw that? That's what I wanted you to see. The dash, hey, how you doing? That's what I wanted you to witness. 
Hey, 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 that's what I wanted you to witness. You see how the bikes dash across the street to try to beat the traffic going left? And you notice these guys who are turning, you see that? Those guys are in the middle. They have to wait until those turning traffic who beat them get the go ahead. Hi, <laughs> how you doing? So that's something you have to be very, very careful and be ready for is those traffic that are making the left turn versus those who are coming straight. And of course, as you can see, it's traffic on both sides there. But wait a few more hours. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> All right. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. But wait a few more hours when it's really, really, and when I say really, really, I mean, wait a few more hours Till it really the traffic really pick up and then you're gonna see a more a kind of dashing hey all right a kind of dashing and a kind of like more you know speed a speed to get you know to get the to get the right away or to get ahead you're going to see it lively at about 4 30 5 o'clock when the traffic really picks up so we're gonna come back we're gonna look at that all right all right sweet understanding the traffic is the most important thing and once you understand it and you drive and ride like a Filipino, you'll fit right in. The objective when you drive here and ride here is to, because the car tint here is very, very dark and the government allows it because the sun is so hot. I'll show you in my car how just leaving the, 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 the phone holder on the glass, how it actually melts the phone holder. So they, because of that, the tint here in the car is very, very dark, so you can't see in it. So when you drive in your car, the objective is to let, is to let those who are, are, are watching you or seeing you coming down the road think you're Filipino. <laughs> but when I'm on the bike, man, I ride just like a Filipino until they see my skin color <laughs> and my height, I guess. <laughs> but yes, yes, <laughs> how you doing, guys? <laughs> yeah, but yeah, man, again, to get acclimated is just to understand that when you're in Rome, uh, you don't always have to do what the Romans do, but you surely have to drive like them. <laughs> so here I am, and I wanted to show you how dark the glasses are. The, the, the windscreen are, not the windscreen, but the windows are, so that, and this is the reason you know, in the States, they would never allow you to have it so dark unless you're a dignitary or something. But here, you can see how dark it is. And that's because the sun gets really, really hot, right? The sun gets really, really hot. Now I'm going to show you, I left my, um, my phone holder, you know, because I have one for the car. And I left it inside the car because I wanted, you know, to keep it. I didn't want to like take it off and on, but I didn't understand. I didn't understood. The, the, the seriousness of the heat down here. But watch this, watch this. This is gonna blow you away, watch this. Ready, watch this. You see that? It melted it. It melted it, I mean melted, melted, melted. You see that? It melted it so bad. So now I gotta clean the house. But I got me a new one, which I'm gonna actually put in here. That way, I, you know, I don't have to worry about it. So yeah, the thickness, of the, the darkness of the glass. Yeah, and this is so that you could protect yourself from the sun here. So the darker, the better for protection. Yeah, the darker, the better the protection. So that's, that's, what's, that's what's happening. So when you drive, no one can see you. you no one can see inside the car, man, because it's really, really dark. So when, you, when I drive, I drive like a Filipino. No one will ever know that I'm a, uh, I'm a foreigner because I drive just like a Filipino. And that, that's one of the reasons, get a car, it's so dark. And when I ride, I ride like a Filipino. All right, that's my hand max right there. And this right here, and you notice, it's one thing you'll see, I have a cover for the bike, but you know, sometime in the sun when you don't want to uncover it or cover it back, you can put like a cardboard over the seat because it gets really, really hot, right? So that's what I did, you know, I put a cardboard over the seat because you know, I might want to change the bike, I want to be, you know, in the nighttime, I put the cover on, but yeah, that's, that's it, man. It's crazy, awesome, love it.
All right, let's come. Phone, leave your phone. Oh. Oh, no. Just in the way. All right, so for the next section of this uh, video, I'm taking my beautiful chate with me and um, come. Yeah, I'm taking her with me. We're gonna go to my road dog's house, of course. And, and eat up all his free food over there. <laughs> yeah, and then um, we get you to see a little bit on the traffic on that side. And then what we're gonna do also is I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna come back to the place where I took you before to show you the intersection of, that, of those places. So that way you can see how at, you know, at rush hour, what it really, really looks like, all right? so. With that said, I love you guys and stay tuned till I see you on the road as we move out. There goes my woman. There she is. Say hi. hi. <laughs> I think she loved this bike. So out of this bike, my love, out of this bike, the, the NMAX or the, or the Galaxy, Galaxy, or the, the Kurosaki, which one you like the most and why? And Max, more comfortable. <laughs> Easy. Easy. Yeah, yeah. I like that one too, but it's a little too fast. All right. So there you have it. If you like the other one, but it's a little bit too fast. <laughs> Get your glasses. So here we are at my road dog's house, and we ate up all the food. I tell you, we're going to eat up all the food. <laughs> and so... All the food, man. We yeah, ate up all the yeah, food. Yeah, I tell you. So... Now that we ate of all the food, and my wife relax. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and they're closed, so don't be calling. At four. At four o'clock. <laughs> so we eat up all the food. I tell you, I was going to my road dog house, and you know, he's, he's, just, he's an amazing cook, man. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a video, um, an episode, and just show you when 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 Meka and Sai come together and create this amazing meal. So we're gonna do a whole vlog on that. And, and my wife as well. She's going to, we're gonna do some cooking at our house. Just show you how we cook, you know, cause sometimes, you, you know, when you're at the, um, when, you, when, when, you, when you're in a strange place, living in a strange land, you don't eat the food you're accustomed to eat. So what I wanna do is, I wanna eat the food I'm accustomed to eat. We cook it. And so, yeah, this was just an infomercial. Now back to our regular, regular schedule program <laughs> all right so we eat up all the food and now we're leaving that's my beautiful sister right there and she can she can burn baby <laughs> them food are right yeah 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 and and the wife is going to ride and um yeah you're gonna ride right yeah behind you no you're gonna drive the motorcycle and i'm gonna do the video and you wanna die <laughs> That's the only way, unless you want to die. Wow. <laughs> wow. Drive I mean, us to death. Wow. I'm glad y'all know the, 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 the capacity of my life. Listen. Okay. I, drive I, me I to ride death. Ride yeah, you can. Yeah. I'm going to ride you straight to death. So. I might just like that too. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I may mean, just like that. <laughs> All right, catch you guys on the road. All right, so now here we are. Notice that you got foot traffic and you got a lot of people walking across. This is when it's going, you're going to see the bulk of the traffic. But right now, it's still a little, it's about, it's about 548. And see that? Check out that in the road, you see that? How the car just came out? So this is why, the car and the bike just came out, right? So this is why you can't just ride around in traffic, because if you do, you don't, you know, you might meet in an accident. Look at this guy, you see that right there? See that? He's cutting right across, see that? And that's what you're going to see a lot. Watch these guys emerging into traffic. They just come straight out sometimes, so you have to look. And you can't take for granted that you, even though it seems like you have the right of way, you 
can't take for granted that you are actually in the right. Notice how the bikes are going through. Look at this, they're gonna head through the car. If you notice that, you notice this? They're cutting right through and through, so you have to be mindful. And these Jitney, these Jitney cars right here, they are something of a danger too for bikes because they ride on the right hand side of the road to pick up passengers. And so as they pick up passengers, they can just cut off to the right and you're coming down the right in the bike and they'll get you. So you have to look out for them. And you have to understand that this is their lane, the right side of the road is their lane and that's what they do. And so you have to understand that. Now I tell you I drive like a Filipino, so I'm going right through the traffic right here, you see? And that's why you have to look on both sides of the road to make sure you're not cutting on the bikers. They come right to the middle, like I'm doing right now. And you see, look at that little boy. He just ran across the road right there. You can't tell if you're driving a car, you see? He stand up right there, he just ran across the road. If you think you have the right of way and you come around, you may hit that little kid. So that's why you have to make sure your eyes are moving and that even though you can't see like this van right here, I can't see in front of the van, a bike might be coming out, a little child might be coming out, a dog might be coming out. So you have to be careful and you have to watch that. You know what I mean? Very important. This is rush hour traffic. Bikers here also is a taxi. So you might see a lot of bikes with people on that. They're taxis. So if you look, if you notice and you look on the other side of the street, you notice that there's not much traffic, right? Because the traffic are going, are going out. But Later on, if you go to that side of the street, you're going to see a lot of traffic coming in. So this is the going out traffic right now. Now I'm going to go to the right side of the road. As you can see, I'm riding here on the right side of the road with my wife. You notice the jitney? The jitney is right in front of me. They just let off a passenger. He leave a little space for the bike, but he can at any time close off that traffic so you have to pay attention if you're riding here see look at that see how you closing me off so you have to pay attention this look at that again see that but this time he indicates sometimes they don't indicate just close off the road on you so that's why you have to be very careful Notice the incoming traffic, it's getting thicker now. So by time six, between six and seven, you're going to see buku of traffic, man. Notice the car, look at this right here. Notice the cars, they're turning, because there's no traffic person here. And now I'm trying to get around, you see me getting around? Now what if I got around and someone was coming and they didn't see them? Look out here, two dogs. So you have to look out for everything. Dogs, kids, uh, pedestrian, and you gotta look out for cars and bikes, especially bikes. Stop it, turn it around to you. Turn it around to you now. So I just want to say thank you to my beautiful Chate, my wife, 
who is actually videoing us right now. She's on the back of the bike, as you can see, braving it out, videoing us. Normally, I have uh, uh, my Action 4 in the front of the bike, but I wanted, you know, a different view. I wanted a different angle. When, I'm, uh, when I put my Action 4 in the front of the bike, it just shows me what's in front of me. And, you know, because I'm riding, I don't want to readjust anything. But with my wife here, she can readjust and she can change her angle. It's kind of cool. This is her first time doing this, guys. So give her a, give her a, 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 a thumbs up for that. Show your beautiful face, baby. Let me see you. Show your face, not mine. <laughs> This guy, see this? The guys are coming, but the bikes are keep coming, right? Look at the bike turning through there. All of this you have to be mindful of when you are driving or riding here in the Philippines. Once you get that, once you get these simple things down, then driving and riding here is a cinch. Common sense. You notice where I'm riding, I'm riding on the white line. I'm riding in the middle of the road. Bikes are passing me on the left. <laughs> that guy was waving. And bikes are passing me on the right. Cars are coming up on behind me because I left enough space for a car on the left to pass me. You see that? That's the culture here. Nobody's blowing their horns. If you notice that, Nobody's using their horns except for when, you know, it's immediate danger, but it's the culture, so nobody's gonna go, what are you doing in the middle of the road, you know? Actually. All right, so we're gonna go back to the overpass where I actually started earlier this morning and you're going to see their, their traffic uh, uh, cops or traffic directors um, there so you're not going to see that craziness I'd have to show you that in a, some other time when they're not there As long as they're there, they're going to direct the traffic really good. Look at that. See, people are walking across the street. That's why you can't drive too fast. Because if you drive too fast, you'll hit somebody. I think I said that enough now for you to really understand the emphasis I'm putting on these on these points that I'm making over and over again. You got to be vigilant. Um, you got to pay attention. You got to use common sense. That's the only way you're going to be able to do this. You, you notice the bikes. The bikes rule the road, man. Now if you, if you have a bike and you wait in line, might as well you drive a car. If you're never gonna get anywhere. Tight little squeeze, but I made it. Hello. 
it. Notice how we're running on the sides. All the bikes are running on the sides. And that's what we do here. Ride like a Filipino. Oh, oh. So notice this corner where I brought you this morning. I brought you here because I wanted to show you. Right now the traffic is not as bad as it is going to get in a couple of minutes from now. Maybe a little earlier, depending. So the traffic, you know, rush hour can change, it can fluctuate, depending. But I brought you back here because I want you to see this turn. When there is a traffic director or a traffic officer here, um, it runs smooth because he's able to stop the traffic, stop the bike, stop everybody, so that you know you can get a smooth turn. But I want you, I want you to see, I want you to see the turn and how the bikes are going to try to get and the people. Watch this now. Watch the bikes going to go around. See, they don't wait. You see that? Once you make that turn, even in, even before the turn or even in the full of the turn, they don't wait. And so, every, it's, it's everybody for themselves. They, when a person turn, that person know that he has to inch in, inch in, inch in to make that turn. Guys are running across the road. You can't see them, especially if they're in dark colors. You can't see them. So you have to be very, very mindful. Watch this turn right here. He's going in. Cars are coming out. Watch this other turn right here. Watch this other turn right here. I want you to see this. Watch this. So he's, he, he actually made a, a good turn without any hindrance. And that jibney, I left the jibney came to make the turn to pick up those people over there. But just watch a few more and then we'll, we'll, we'll move on. All right, watch this turn right over here right now and then we're gonna move on. When the traffic gets heavy, as you can see, it starts to get heavy. Bikes, everybody coming. These guys are trying to turn. That guy's backing up. Just like your regular scheduled program here, guys. Now, this guy make a wide turn, so most likely he's going to have to reverse. I don't think he's going to be able to make that full turn. So watch this. All right. Oh, he's got good locks. All right. You notice the car is, is busting over there, and the bikes are busting over there. So that's what you got to see. That's what you got to be mindful of. Awesome. All right. We got one more stop. We got one more stop. I'm going to bring you back up to the other areas where I showed you first. Uh, Cebu City, South, South Cebu Road or Cebu City Road, 840, and Rafael Rabaya. And then we're going to call it a, a night. Hi guys, how you doing? <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Now living in the Philippines. Yes, love it, man. Love it here. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right. Yo, 
I saw him. I saw this guy scratching me up a little bit. That's some of the things that can happen here. You can get squeezed a little bit. You're inching in. If, you have the, if you're in front, then just keep going. If you're in back, then stop. There it is, there it is guys. This is what I was telling you. Look at that, look at that. This is what I was telling you guys. Watch where I'm going now. I'm going over here. Because it's every man for himself, but I can't assume. See, gotta wait. That's what I was telling you. When they're not here, it's every man for himself, herself. So you have to remember this every single time. This is what the traffic looked like at rush hour. And rush hour can last anywhere from, I say every, anywhere from two, three o'clock to eight o'clock at night. Depending on when people get off. And most people, most workers who work here, like say in the malls or in them big department stores, they don't get off till 10 o'clock at night. So, Rush hour can last a bit long. Now watch my bike and look where I'm going. I'm not joining the line. I'm actually riding down the middle of the road because it's actually safe for me to do so. But you see that lady just cut right in? I could have blasted her if I was moving too fast. So what I'm going to do, I'm gonna cut right in here so as to not be in the road. That is how it's that's how it's done. That's how it's done. So here I am at the Rock Yao and Shari Yao's home. And they served me some beautiful breakfast, man. Like I thought I was in the IHOP. Really good stuff. And of course, my brother Ta'ar is here. And oh. he the man. So if you need a haircut, man, that's the guy to go to because he is incredible at what he does. And me, a farmer barber, is sitting in his chair. So <laughs> you know I'm gonna know if you don't know what he's doing. And I'm telling you, I've seen his work. I know that he knows what he's doing. So I want you guys to take a look at the before. I'm gonna give him free reign. Uh, I'm gonna give him free reign to hook me up so you guys see the before and then I'll show you the after. All right, peace. Let's do it, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got some more. What are you gonna yeah. do? I'll put you. Yeah, man. Get, get you right, man. Get me right, man. Do me up, man. This is a real deal right here. Get me right. Get me right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I won't be looking sexy. I got a date later. <laughs> yeah, man. Got a date. Come on, man. Come on now. <laughs> you know you gotta treat the wives right. Uh, all right, <laughs> right y'all see it? All right, yeah. free reign. I'm not telling him what to do. I'm gonna let him do his thing. But I know I'm gonna look beautiful for it, so it's what it is. Uh, so this is the after, y'all. Look at that. That's really nice. The way my wife love it. She don't want me to do my beard at all. And so the way to iron, have it lined up really nice up here in the top. Cause you know me, I'm always cutting it down here and then cutting down here and then always changing my beard. This looks really nice. I'm really happy with it. Yes. My wife's gonna be happy with it because now I can let it grow. I want it to look like that right there. Show him tar. <laughs> <laughs> that's my, how my beard's supposed to look. <laughs> that's, the, that's the king over there. Uh, yeah, man. So yeah. So if you, if you come to my bar, man, you need to get your hair cut. You don't have to worry about where you're going to cut your hair. This is the man. Because they don't have no barbers down here that can cut us, cut, us out, cut us out like this. So when you come to my bar, just come see your man. 
The R is the man. You have a Facebook page? You have a Facebook page? I do. It's Sharp the R. Sharp, Sharp the R. All yeah. right. So yes, yes. So go get him on the Facebook page so you can hook him up, hook up with him, let him get him familiar with you. So when you come, you know, you know, have a place. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. All right, brother. <laughs> All right, that was awesome. Get to spend some time with my brother. Cook us a great meal, man. I'm telling you, I felt like I was in IHOP. Man, beautiful. Eat, laugh, talk. Get my beard all looking nice. And now I'm gonna head on my bike and go home. Take my beautiful, beautiful chate out for dinner. All right, at another brother's house. Yeah, shalom. So in closing, I hope this was educational for you. I hope that if you come to the Philippines, no matter where you're in the Philippines, if you decide to ride or drive, understand the culture is what's gonna do it for you. Recognize that if you're going to drive here, if you're gonna ride here, you must think like a Filipino. You must ride like a Filipino. That's how you're gonna survive the road here. Get out of your head. Don't overthink it. You already know how to drive. You already know how to ride. Just recognize that the culture here is different from where you are, where you're coming from. Adapt to the culture here the road culture, the traffic culture, and you will survive. All right, I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching my, my, um, my channel. And don't forget, don't forget, don't forget to subscribe, to hit that notification button so that you will be the first to receive this content. Don't forget to tell a friend and thank you so much for your comment, your thumbs up, and thank you for watching. Peace.